So let's do something a little bit fun and a little bit unusual. I've never done a tag video before. I haven't actually been tagged in this, but um, I just really liked the idea of it in general. And I've had really a lot of fun watching other people do this particular tag video. So this is a tag video that's called Perfume Extremes, if I had to choose. And it's um, by Veronica Says and Jack's Beautiful You and I, I actually it's the first time I'd ever seen Jack's Beautiful You but I've been watching Veronica Says for quite a while so I saw hers first and I went and watched the Jack's one and then I watched Claire Smith's and I, I absolutely love Claire so like it's just been really fun to watch people answering these questions and obviously they're quite tricky if you have a big collection to kind of choose things but I thought I would give it a go and I will start with the first question which was best blind buy of the year so I am choosing even though I'm noticing my lid doesn't want to stay on this which is annoying but this is Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker a discontinued fragrance unfortunately that is something that I 100% did not think I would like at all I initially because I was just really digging Sarah Jessica Parker's perfumes this year um, I'd been exploring them all. I actually had Privé, which I really liked, and I had my eye on Unspoken, which I really wanted to get hold of, and I also love. And then I just got a little, like a test tube of Stash, the original one, and I just fell in love with it, despite it being woody, unisex, leaning slightly masculine. Like, I had, I just, and even on the first spray, I was like, "That's not for me. This is this is not for me." And I've absolutely fallen in love with it to the point where I have this 100 ml bottle of the perfume. I have I managed to get hold of the perfume oil. I have the hair uh, um, perfume, and I also still have the uh, the little test tube. Um, and I actually have a decanted test tube, which is in a little spray bottle for, to take in my bag because I've fallen so hard <laughs> in love with this. It is um, it is woody, but it's also so comforting. It's like gentle wood. It's not like when it dries down, it's not harsh. It's super soft. I'm very lucky because the pistachio comes out on my skin. And I can really smell that kind of creamy nuttiness mixed in with, I think it's masoya wood, but actually to me it smells like just exceptionally smooth sandalwood. And I love sandalwood. Um, I don't really get huge amounts of cedar once it dried down. I don't get loads of patchouli once it's dried down. I get a bit of incense, which just makes it feel again like churchy. I mean, even just sniffing on my fingers, it's such a beautiful perfume. So, I mean, absolutely it's my most surprising but also probably my favorite because i mean what an absolute corker it is so that's the first one that's stash by sarah jessica parker sjp so oh my worst blind buy of the year oh my god this one's still in the box because i've actually had this for so long and i haven't been able to even bear to look at it <laughs> until now i've had this for a really long time a really quite a while um, this is Christmas in New York by Demeter and it's I hate it uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever had something that makes me gag the way that this does it's like I think it's supposed to be um roasting cinnamon uh chestnuts or maybe um uh almonds and things like out on the street at christmas time and i think there's probably loads of people who really like this scent for me personally it is a powder bomb that choked me it's literally i mean i it literally hit me in the back of the throat i sprayed it very stupidly i sprayed it in the office because i don't normally have a, a problem with demeter perfumes being super strong they're not normally really strong they're supposed to be a cologne um they are just normally pretty inoffensive they don't normally last very long this thing i sprayed not even on my skin i sprayed it onto a, a little bit of paper it 
it managed to permeate every single part of my office, everything I was wearing. What I had to, when I got home that night, I literally took all my clothes off immediately. This is so like, I, oh, I, it's like burnt, it's like burnt sugar. It's got some kind of spices, but there is a powdery nuttiness. And to be fair, chestnuts are very, very powdery, but uh, it just, it freaks me out. It's really sweet. It's, it just literally, I mean, I hate it. And actually, funnily enough, I, I saw um, Veronica says talking about this one. I know she likes it. And I was kind of chuckling because I've had this in my cupboard for ages. It's actually, I think it's actually started to change colour slightly. Um, and I just, I, I hated it so much that this is the first time I smelt it since I first bought it. And I, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's just um, that one. That's just not in my wheelhouse at all. Um, so then my favourite perfume of all time. This is so difficult to answer because, um, I mean, I could say, but I've talked about it so much. I've done like special videos all about it, which is La Belle's de Riki by um, Nina Riki, the original Lib the, the Liberty Fizz in the green bottle with the pink lid. But I think realistically, I'm going to have to go for this one because I fell in love with this one when I was literally a child before I knew what it was so I actually use the oil normally of this I've got like I've got a bottle of the oil but I thought you know it's just a bit easier to see if I use the big spray I really only use this one to go on top of the oil I wear the oil to bed a lot I have it in a rollerball that I decanted it into horrible rubbish bottle I could have picked this for the worst bottle to be fair but um this is skin musk um, I think, I don't know who used to make it, whether it's Prince Machiavelli or something, but now it's perfumed decor. Um, this is a very cheap American drugstore perfume that it is like the old version of Cote Wild Musk that when I was younger, you used to get in like a kind of bullet shaped black bottle. Um, and I wore that when I was a teenager. That was a kind of more beastly, sexy version of this sort of skin musk profile and skin musk is a it's basically sandalwood flowers and musk but there's something so soothing and calming and beautiful slightly kind of soapy but like in like a, a beautiful clean bar soap smell and it's just my favorite musk of all time if you watch my video about this particular one this is one that I smell at a friend's house when I was probably about 11 or 12 years old. She had the oil of it that her mum had from America, but it was decanted into, it was decanted into like a really nice dabber bottle. And so I smelt it, I fell in love with it and I never knew what it was. I couldn't, she couldn't remember what it was called. I had no idea where to find it. And when I did find it, um, I just, I backed up. I've got so many bottles of the oil and I just absolutely adore it. The oil's way better than the cologne. If any of you are watching this and thinking rather than just being interested you might want to buy something it's um yeah <laughs> get the oil 100 percent get the oil not the cologne so that's skin musk and it's a, just an absolute all-time love Doo -doo -doo. okay what's the next question um what would be your signature scent this is so difficult obviously because i i reckon i've got like at least 150 perfumes um i've gone for this one just because I crave it quite a lot. I have two backup bottles of this and I love it. I feel comfortable. Pretty much I can wear it all year round. So this is Vera Wang Embrace and this is Marigold and Gardenia. I think of this one as melon and marigold because I don't get a huge amount of gardenia. I get loads of marigold and it's got like melon and mango in the top. There's also something sweet and creamy about it. It's just, it's light enough for me to just be comfortable in at any time i can't imagine anyone finding it particularly offensive it's just such a pretty fragrance and like in the u they're about 15 pounds normally for a, for a 30 ml bottle you can't get them any bigger for some reason these ones this is this is a test bottle though and it cost me about like i think on direct cosmetics in the uk you can get them for about five or six pounds uh so this isn't the original lid they've normally got a square lid but i just i'm obsessed and i love this perfume and i i will reach for this one absolutely happily anytime so i think if i was choosing a signature this would be a really safe bet for that um yeah that's just i will start running out of space as i always do um okay what's next oh what would you i what would you choose th what would you choose for your wedding day scent this one's easy because i literally got married last month and i wore what i knew i would wear on the big day which is dior 
forever and ever Dior. Um, I've had this perfume, and you can like I, I'm really I don't use it a huge amount because it was expensive. It's really special, um, and for me, it feels very much like a special occasion perfume. Even though it's like it's so wearable, like it's so light and beautiful. I think this is absolutely the smell of spring flowers. It's this. It's literally the smell of springtime in the UK. It reminds me of. Even though, I mean, I think of it as my Freesia perfume, I think it also kind of reminds me of the smell of blossom when it's coming out on the trees, when you start getting the um, uh, the mock orange coming out on all the bushes. Like, there's just something so gloriously light and floral. And it's one of, I mean, I hardly have any purely fur, uh, floral perfumes in my collection. This one is such a special perfume absolutely love it wore it on my wedding day my husband has rarely smelt this on me because it's such a special occasion one and i wanted it for our wedding day so he he thought it was beautiful as well and it's just so i i just love it i absolutely love it i think um i mean i went did i i can't even remember how long i've had that one i've had it ages it still smells perfect i mean literally years um so next one what is your favourite date night scent? Now this is difficult because if I was going on a date with anyone other than my husband, I would choose Vera Wang Embrace um, uh, French Lavender and Tuberose, which really smells very similar to Coffee Break by Maison uh, Margiela. Or I would choose Guest Seductive Red because I, I feel really sexy in that perfume. I really like it and it's kind of my version of the Baccarat Rouge smell. But if I'm going on a date with my husband, he's not too bothered about like the super sweet ones. He likes me in fruity musks. And the one that he's literally growled at me before when I've been wearing it is a very cheap perfume. <laughs> it's Guest Dare. So Guest Dare is kumquat, musk, um white florals again i think this smells really springtime ish it's got like i'm pretty sure that when they say white florals i'm pretty sure it's like jasmine and again it's got a slight mock orangey smell it reminds me of my star fruit and white flowers from aqua colonia um by 47 11 but it's got a real soapy musk in there this has a kind of ceruti 1881 and a kind of skin musky kind of like bar soapy musk in it so it's got a kind of it so it's musky but it's not like hyper animalic it's not like dirty it's a clean and soft sweet musk but it's also really kind of slightly exotically fruity because it's that kumquat in it it's really lovely. If any of you know CK, um, I think it's called Into You, uh, the same perfumer who made that also made this one. Now again, this is a tester bottle, so this is not the original lid. I just found a lid that fit it. But um, I think I got this from Direct Cosmetics for like seven pounds for 50 mil. And I have a backup of this one as well. But yeah, gen generally like, he really likes me. He he will often say that I smell good in this and he has literally smelt my neck and growled. So I would say it probably not going to work for everyone, but for some reason he just likes me in fruity musks. And I'm pretty sure that's partly because when he met me, I was off, I was often wearing kind of fruity perfumes. Um, I hadn't quite got into all the sweet ones yet, you know? So that's that one. Let's see my most hated perfume of all time okay well this one's easy for me i'm just gonna flower bomb victor and rolf now i genuinely oh my god Vic, oh flower bomb i find really upsetting because it's one of those perfumes that a lot of people like a lot of people wear and i smell it everywhere and not only do i smell flower bomb everywhere but i smell perfumes that want to smell like flower bomb everywhere I really do not like patchouli, but there's something about like really sweet florals with that patchouli um, that, I mean, it's so sickening to me, like sickening. And I did go, <laughs> I, remember, I read an article about that when it literally first came out, which, when did this first come out? It's been interesting to see what the years are. Oh my God, 2005. All right, so I would have read an article in like 2006 this makes sense because it was when I just started working uh, um, in central London and I went to smell it in, um, it would have been Selfridges I think probably, 
and I read this article everyone was like oh everyone said it smelled amazing on me and everyone was giving me compliments all day and yeah okay fine but I went to smell it and I was so horrified like I I thought it was so disgusting absolutely disgusting and then a while a few years later like I mean I smell it on people all the time on the tube and I always hated it I hate smelling I hate sitting next to anyone wearing that perfume and then I moved in with um someone who's now one of my best friends I absolutely love her but when I first moved in with her she had flower bomb and I had to literally admit to her that I really hated it so she would like wear her other perfumes when she was around me because I absolutely I mean I hate it I also really don't like um Oh, the Lancome one that everyone wears. The one with Julia Roberts. Why can't I remember the name of it? Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. La Vie Belle. I really don't like La Vie Belle because I hate fruit chulies as well. Um, but I can live with sitting next to someone wearing La Vie Belle. I cannot sit next to someone wearing Flower Bomb without absolutely feeling sick. And I still don't entirely know why. Um, because, like, Flower Bomb... I'm just trying to work out what it is about it. Did I show you the right flower bomb then? It's the original flower bomb that I hate. I haven't really smelt any of the others. Um, I've only ever smelt the original flower bomb and that is enough for me. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I, I have quite strong feelings about that perfume. It There's something about it that really upsets me. Um, <laughs> okay, worst bottle in my collection. I mean, I could have picked this one. I nearly picked... Um, Jovan Gold Musk or basically or Jovan Musk any of the Jovan Musk they have horrible cheap look looking bottles with weird like metal lids that are like really strange but for practical reasons I've chosen Carolina Herrera 212 which is a really old classic perfume uh, it's not really old I mean it's like but I mean for one thing the the lid it's the, it's the same on both sides and there's no way to tell which one's which. So I'm constantly trying to pull off the bottom and it's so stupid. Um, it's a fabulous, really, again, a very soapy musk perfume that just smells like a clean bar soap. If, you, if you've ever wanted to smell like a clean bar soap and um, if you can't get hold of Pure or Pure is a little bit too kind of tangy for you, Pure, I think, is basically a kind of inspired by this perfume i mean pure by alfred sung that is very famously like a bar soap perfume but this i think is the original um so i think the fragrance is great but i i, I mean there we go i mean what are you supposed to do with it like i i constantly have to like find ways to position it it doesn't stand up if you get the bigger bottles it's still just as i mean it's even more stupid in fact because it's two round bottles like this with a bit in the middle and like oh my god i just i don't know who designed it but i think that they might be a little bit silly <laughs> So yeah, I just I hate that bottle. So my favourite bottle is actually a really cheap perfume, but it's very me. So this is um, Oriflame, and this is Amber Elixir Crystal. And you probably can't see it in this dreadful light. Let me see if I can. Sorry, I'm doing this in the evening, and it's just. I hope you can see the glorious turquoisey colour of this which matches, if you can see, my the theme of my bedroom. Um, and then it's rose gold detailing, and I am a rose gold lady, which I also love this because it's rose gold. So this perfume, I mean, I like the perfume a lot in this as well, which I was very happy about because it's got salt in it, which meant I thought I wouldn't be able to wear it because sometimes salt either gives me a headache or starts to smell like antiseptic on me. This is a lovely perfume. It's so lovely. It's like a beachy, coconutty, creamy perfume that doesn't turn into just a vanilla perfume. But the bottle is 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 so glorious. It's such a oh there look. It always comes out quite blue, but it's actually turquoise in real life. It has a kind of green tone to it. It's just absolutely lovely. I love this bottle. So yeah, I'm very very happy that this perfume worked for me as well because it's just it's just tasty. Um what's the so the next one most expensive perfume that I paid for I've very rarely ever got any perfumes that I didn't pay for myself so <laughs> I have maybe three that have ever been either given to me or paid for by someone else um 
okay poison by christian dior and this is the this is a hundred mil and i i wouldn't i don't need a, a bottle this big of poison because i can really only wear it on winter evenings um, or when i'm being an evil queen <laughs> because it's incredibly strong um it's quite anim it's quite animalic it's very smoky um but the 30 ml bottles of this i think are like 60 70 pounds if you buy them new whereas i managed to get a 100 ml tester bottle from um fragrance x i think for about maybe 80 something pounds um i think i i think they're normally like over a hundred or over but um i think i got this for about 80 pounds it's been a while so i can't entirely remember but it's just a magical smoky animalic honey plum <laughs> it's just it's just lovely but yeah i mean these are pretty expensive i have three i have four perfumes that are expensive to me they were all under 100 pounds but three of them are dior so this i think when i got it i got it on a deal and i got it for like 75 quid which for 100 mil of forever and ever dior is a pretty good deal this one again that's a pretty good deal for dior poison was about 80. um june i've got a, a little 30 mil of and i have i can't even remember how much that was but it definitely wasn't 100 quid back when back in the day um and then I've got a, a YSL one that was like 75, but the most expensive perfume I've ever bought, which I don't own anymore, is actually Victoria Minya um, Hedonist Cassis. And that was a perfume that I did really like because it reminded me so much of La Belle's de Riki, Liberty Fizz. But um, I, I always say Riki because that's how I always said it, but I'm pretty sure you're probably supposed to say Ricci. But anyway, forgive me. Um, it was it's a beautiful perfume the most beautiful bottle i probably ever had but it's it was also one that was not easy to wear because it was quite sharp and also because it was so expensive i always felt weird wearing it because it was also quite light um so i ended up selling that one but i mean that that was 150 pounds that's the most expensive perfume i've ever bought i've never and nowadays i i won't spend more than 100 pounds on a perfume because i've got so many it doesn't make any sense for me to do that so yeah so it's poison um then we have oh least expensive i mean i buy cheap stuff all the time but um let's go for my my this is a little 10 mil of katie perry's indie and it cost me about two pounds from direct cosmetics but the 30 mil bottles cost about four i actually got three 30 mil bottles of this for six pounds something so i think overall Katy perry's indie although it is it was a toss-up between this and this for my um what would be my signature scent and it's one of the cheapest perfumes i've ever bought but it's amazing i'll tell you what if i wear this firstly it smells just like the uh, my friend's santel is it santel 33 i can't remember which one it is but i know it's in a it's in a white bottle it's in a bottle that doesn't a posh version of this um i can't even remember the name of the blooming company but anyway super expensive smells almost identical to me to katie perry's indie um and this i find has a lot of projection it lasts forever on me if i honestly if i put on some clothes that i wore over a week ago when i wore this perfume i will still very clearly be able to smell it and i'll probably have to wear indie again because nothing else will cover it up I love this perfume. I think on me, it smells a bit like coconut cream. Um, I can, it's very musky. There's a lot of sandalwood, but it just smells like coconut to me. Um, and in fact, when I, when I've tried the Sarah Jessica Parker, um, NYC crush, it smells so much like this that I just didn't even bother. I just didn't even bother buying a big bottle of that. But anyway, yeah, this is an absolute bargain. It's so cheap. It's crazy cheap. Um, okay running out of space mm. most complimented uh, compl most complimented perfume of all time now as claire said claire smith in her version of this tag video british people don't really do perfume compliments nobody chase if someone chased you down in the uk you'd literally run from them if someone started talking to you you'd probably think you were going to get like robbed or that they were being weird um 
and that therefore people don't really do that like I sometimes smell people's perfumes and I want to say something but I'm always like they're either going to think I'm creepy or they're just going to be a bit freaked out by the whole situation or they're going to feel like I'm like bothering them it's just a weird British thing like we don't really we don't really do that so I've had to go according to like family and friends um who have complimented this and maybe like colleagues as well there's definitely been at least one colleague who said they like this um and I wore this recently for the evening event at my wedding and lots of people who were there um so that's family and friends sort of asked me what I was wearing and said that it was nice so that is mmm that's so delicious Stella Pop by Stella McCartney and Stella Pop is just a I mean it kind of smells a lot of people have said this smells like Barbie dolls um I don't remember Barbie dolls having a fragrance that's not like a scent memory that I have really I remember like dolls baby dolls not Barbies so so and the baby doll smell is a slightly different type, type of smell to me to this but this to me is violet and tuberose there's definitely sandal, sandalwood in it but it has, it's got tomato leaf, which gives it a fresh greenness. And I love tomato leaf in perfumes. And it just has a slightly palma violety candy kind of beautiful smell to it. Um, it has, this is also possibly one of the worst bottles. Not because I don't love the bottle, but because the sprayers are almost useless. They spray into, I mean, I'd be tempted to show you, but it will go everywhere. Um... But I, lots of people think that this is a pretty scent. They're quite right. It's a very pretty fragrance indeed. Um, I like this one a lot. Um, I've got another bottle, like a small bottle of this as well, which is why there's not much of a dent in this because depending on whether I'm taking it with me in my bag, depends on which one I use. I also have a rollerball of it um, if I'm taking a small handbag, but I don't really like rollerballs. I don't know about everyone else, but I don't really like rollerballs. Um, this is kind of it's kind of difficult for me to work out how bright i should have this so i'm just it's going up and down i'm afraid let's try and get it to a sensible level is that all right okay um so most nostalgic perfume um i'm going for i mentioned this quite recently actually i'm just gonna have a sniff yeah uh, i mean it reminds me of my childhood. Um, Le Mans by Coty. Um, I'm probably going to have to try and work out a way to actually make this more visibly appealing. <laughs> so let's try and move things along a little bit. Let's let Poison nestle in there. Um, Le Mont by Coty. Now, this particular perfume, this stupid roller one. <laughs> oh, I think it's going to stay. So, I used to wear this literally when I was a kid. I wore the body spray of it a lot, you know. Um, you can still get body sprays of Le Mont by Coty. Um, but I didn't know back when I was young that this was basically a. Um, I mean, I, I don't. I think there's actually a great um, video on YouTube by a gentleman that I. I'm afraid I've completely forgotten the name of, but if you search for Le Mans by Coty, you'll find it really easily. Um, he has a kind of history of this perfume, which is really interesting. It's from the late twenties. <laughs> I mean, I didn't realize obviously when I was little that this perfume was based around the recipe for Chanel number no. five. Um, nowadays i can recognize the kind of vintage vibe of it but it's really floral it's really soapy it's incredibly al aldehydic but it's not like it's not massively animalic it's not kind of really difficult to wear i mean it's difficult to wear if you don't like vintage perfumes because you can tell that this is you can tell this isn't a modern perfume some people would call it like a grandma perfume or an old lady perfume and i'm like well i i very I really recommend that video where he talks about this because as he points out those old women who are wearing these perfumes that people talk about disparagingly are literally the f the four mothers of modern feminism and I adore them all so yeah I'm very proud to have old lady perfumes in my collection and I'm happy to wear them and I'm 40 so you know fine um 
yeah i just wore it and my grandmother who has sadly passed away during the hellish covid times um she used to buy this for me she would buy me the body spray and the perfume and she would buy me soaps of it she would always buy me little sets right up until the time where i i had to say you know mum can you can you tell gran i don't wear them all anymore and she still would buy it for me because she'd forget every year um <laughs> so i'd constantly be taking it down the charity shop and now i'm happy to have it you can get this for a fiver in the uk and I love the um, Art Deco bottle. It's really up my street, lovely and 20s style. It's got a bit of a cheap plastic cap, but I don't care. And it just, it takes me back to being, and I mean young because I was wearing this before I was wearing Wild Musk. So I must have been like nine years old when I used to wear this body spray, eight and nine, you know, really young. Um, yeah, so many, many happy memories of that. And I'm happy to have it back. So the last question is the most difficult for me, which is what is the most offensive perfume in your collection that you still wear anyway? Because I don't believe that I have any perfumes that are particularly offensive outside of maybe poison. I know a lot of people don't like poison, so but I've already chosen that one. <laughs> I don't want to choose it again. So I was having a good think about what I have in my collection that other people think is weird, but I think is really nice. And there's really only one that I can think of. Well, there's, mm, there's a Jill Sanders sun flanker, which I think is super weird, but I'm not sure other people think it's weird. Whereas this one, everyone goes on about how weird this is and I don't really find it massively weird. But again, you've got to bow to what other people say. This is Sarah Jessica Parker. This is Covert, the original Covert. And Covert is... The weird thing about it, I think, is that it's a very cosy perfume and it's chocolatey. And it's a dark chocolate, but it's also really light, kind of spring, um, bright, citrusy, fruity, um, honeysuckle, full of honeysuckle. Um, and yeah, so it is, it's a slightly odd combination, but I would see my argument for cover by, by Sarah Jessica Parker is that actually, it smells niche. It smells to me like an expensive niche, per niche perfume, as does Stash. And in fact, I feel like that about, I think most Sarah Jessica Parker perfumes that I've smelled outside of the NYC collection, which I think are the most generic, all of her perfumes, I think if they were in a Maison Margiela um, bottle or, you know, like, um, what are they called? A tat de Libre, are they called? I might be getting them that name wrong. But anyway, if they were in a niche manufacturer's, a niche house bottle, people would be talking about them in a completely different way. That's how I feel about her perfumes. I think she she's my absolute favorite celebrity perfumer, like, I mean, by a mile. And I think that she chooses really interesting people to work with, and that's why we get such weird, weird perfumes, you know? Weird in inverted commas. So yeah, I mean, I just love cover. I think it's... um. It's very cosy to me, really cosy. And I get from it lavender, honeysuckle, lemon, and dark chocolate. And that, yes, fair enough, that sounds like a slightly weird mixture. But I just find it really comforting and cosy. And I can wear it in spring, but actually, um, this for me is an autumn perfume. I didn't actually put it in my autumn perfume things because I thought it, um, I, I already had so many, I think, Sarah Jessica Parker, because I stuck to the stash range. But uh, I wore this the, um, the other day because I, it's just such a good one for when the weather's cooling down, when you, but you don't want to wear something heavy because it's not heavy. But it's, I can smell this for about six hours, I think, before I want to respray it. Um, it is quite subtle. All of her perfumes are a little bit skin scenty. None of them have massive projection. But um, I just, yeah, I just think this is really nice. But I think other people probably think it's weird. Um, no one's ever told me that they think it's weird when I've worn it. But then, like I said, like people in the UK don't tell you when they think something's nice. So they're definitely not going to tell you when they think it's not nice. Um, <laughs> unless you know them very, very well. My husband's never said that he doesn't like this. But um, the reviews would suggest that it's not massively popular so <laughs> so that's one I went for um because outside of poison which I think is probably in re reality my most offensive to other people's noses um 
I don't think I really have offensive perfumes outside of that. I think that most of my perfumes, because I like skin scenty stuff, are quite gentle. I don't have many beast mode perfumes. And, um, you know, I think Poem is probably my next strongest after Poison, but most people seem to really like Poem, so I don't think people find that one offensive. Um, yeah, so anyway, that was my um, um, untagged tag video, because no one actually tagged me to do it. I've tagged myself just for fun. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and that's me done. <laughs>